Hey guys, Danelle here. So I thought it would be a really fun video to show you all the different kinds of trees that you can grow in the desert area. So I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, hotter than hell here. It's uh, the middle of the summer, so I'm feeling we're feeling very upset that we all live here, but there are some really great trees that you can grow here. And so I wanted to show you what's possible. A lot of people don't think all these different trees are possible, but it is. I will also show you a few that I have tried to grow that have failed. Some of you that have followed us know which ones I'm gonna show you. But for the most part, all the ones that you see thriving are the ones that have done great in pretty much full sun here in Arizona. Um, one thing to know about growing any kind of trees in Arizona is that if you go to Lowe's or somewhere and it says full sun, uh, just know that in Arizona everything, everything does better with morning sun, afternoon shade. So if you can give it just a little bit of afternoon shade, if you can place it in a spot where there's a tree that gives afternoon shade or your house or some kind of structure gives it afternoon shade, it's gonna be a lot happier. It's gonna do a lot better in the first couple years and you won't have to baby it as much. All right, let's get started. Okay, so coming down the drive, or coming down the walkway here, I'm gonna start right at the beginning of the yard. I'm first gonna show you kind of like how our entire yard looks. So right here, is our entire front yard and we've kind of deemed this our orchard because at least we know that this is away from all of our animals in the back that can probably destroy all these trees in two seconds. So the first one here is a neem tree. Have you guys ever heard of neem oil? So this is the tree that the neem oil comes from and it's supposed to be a great desert tree, a really great shade tree. We did have to baby it for the first two years and we actually didn't plant it till this year. So it's one of those trees that can handle a lot of heat, can do really well, but we did have to baby it by keeping it in a pot and moving it to the indoors during the cold temperatures. And by really cold, I mean like 30 degrees. We had to bring this little guy inside, but now that he's two years old, he should do fine. So that's this is supposed to be a great shade tree. It's, he's done fine. It's been 120 degree heat here and everything's been great. And he's right there in the ground, living life here. Hopefully he's gonna grow nice and tall and shade our entire area. Next up are the blackberries. So we've got two blackberries, one right here, and another one at the end of this little row of tre this little trellis here. And blackberries, lots of different blackberries varieties can be grown here. This is a thornless variety, because we know that we're gonna have to cut back, and we're also gonna wanna pick those berries without getting poked. So. We got a thornless variety, but these do really well here. You can basically stick them in the soil and then water them, and put wood chips on them so they'll stay nice and moist and the water won't dry up too soon. And they do really well. Next up are grapes. So a variety of different grapes grow well here. I think a really popular one are the Thompson and Red Flame, which are these. And these are just babies, they're getting started, but they grow really well here and can take a lot of full sun. Okay, next up are gonna be the mulberries. So mulberries are probably the best fruit to grow in Arizona. We've got this dwarf one. It's called a dwarf, but it gets really big. The only thing is that it grows the tiniest, tiniest little mulberries. So I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but as far as it doing well, yeah, it does really, really well here. The second mulberry we have is a Pakistani mulberry. So you see bigger leaves? That means it's gonna have bigger berries. And so this year we got a ton of berries off of this thing and it was really fun to have and I hope to grow this thing pretty massive. All right, next up are citrus. Now all kinds of citrus do well here in Arizona. This is a Trovita orange. He does great. He's in full sun, he's hanging out, no problem at all. He has really pretty leaves and once he matures, he's gonna give us lots of gorgeous oranges. Now he does have thorns on him, which is kind of annoying, but other than that, really any kind of citrus does really well here. This little guy is an olive tree. Um, I can't remember the exact variety. If I remember it, I'll go ahead and write it down. But he's doing really well here too. He's, he's putting out a little bit of slow growth, but the sun hasn't bothered it at all. All right, next favorite are figs. So I've got three figs starting out here. There's my first one, second one right there, really little one, and then the last one back here. And these all do really well here in Arizona. In the desert, it's really similar kind of thing. As long as you put it in the ground and then be sure to put lots of wood chips around the base of it, it'll help retain the water and it'll help build the soil and feed the tree underneath. There are a few different stone fruits that do really well here. This first one is an apricot. 
apricots. Apricots doing awesome. Really no problems at all. I had a ton of growth this year. Over here is a peach. He gets a little bit more shade and he enjoys the shade so it does really well here. There's another peach right here. And then over here is a plum. So you can get a bunch of different kinds of stone fruit and you can grow all that stone fruit here. You just have to be sure that it's a variety that can grow well here. All right, next up, we've got an almond. This is a dwarf prince almond and he has done fantastic. So he's been in full sun, done amazing. And we're hoping to keep him really small and trim him like a little bush here, but yeah, no, no problem at all in the sun, no problem, no problem at all in the summer or in the winter here. The last little guy that we have in the front here is a prickly pear cactus. So you really can't go wrong with this guy. They do amazing here in Arizona and yeah, can't go wrong with cacti. It's also really cool if you can get fruiting ones. So here's our orchard. Each tree is about 10 feet apart. Uh, we plan on keeping all the trees pretty small and manageable, so we'll let them bush out a little bit, but we don't want them to grow massive. We want them to keep them nice and manageable for us instead of growing too much that we can't handle it. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you the, the sad and lonely avocados that are back here. Now, these used to be my pride and joys, but this summer we got so hot that they really got destroyed. I have a better one in the back though that I'll show you. So these two I've nursed for a couple years and then this heat was just so bad so I'm really not sure. I think they're pretty much done. All right, so we can't show our entire yard without showing our amazing subtropicals that we have in this corner. So I just showed you the avocados in the front. We've learned a big lesson and that is the microclimate actually does count. <laughs> it does matter. This avocado right here is doing so great. It's not even flinching in the sun, and I really think it's because it gets such amazing shade, especially afternoon shade, from this huge ash tree. I think it's really important to have this. Um, you just kind of learn your lesson. You know, you kill trees and you learn, you learn better, so next time you don't kill everything. So avocados can be grown in the desert. I actually have quite a few friends that have large avocado trees in their backyards. It just takes, the biggest thing is knowing which variety is best and being sure to plant in the perfect location in your yard, somewhere that is going to have morning sun and plenty of afternoon shade. Over back here, we've got bananas. Bananas and plantains can be grown here in the desert. It's crazy, but it's so awesome. They really just do great. They love the heat. And in the winter, some varieties have to be pruned back and then protected. Uh, but other than that, they do well here. We've got a mango right here that we've had for, let's see, how long have we had this mango? For about a year or two. And this little, this guy has done great. His trunk's getting nice and thick. He puts out new growth constantly. What's kind of cool about mangoes is that their new growth is this waxy kind of brown growth. It's really interesting. And then it hardens and becomes this stuff. So he's putting off new growth here even in, you know, 115 degree heat. All right, so loquat. This is our little loquat bush. We call it more of a bush than a tree. It's a strawberry loquat, and we've killed three loquats because we put it in the front yard where it's just got too much sun. So we really learned our lesson, and that's why we call this our tropical tree spot because we've learned this is the best place to put these trees. Right in between all these trees are the Barbados cherry bushes that are gonna kinda just stay below like this and keep the base of these trees warm. And last but not least, I have a Moringa tree that we've had to slowly introduce to the sun here. They usually do really, really well in the sun. The only problem is, is that, you know, every young tree needs to be slowly introduced to the harsh sun. So that's what we've been doing with this guy. So a big reason why we planted these trees the way we did is because the tropicals, they can do great in the summer if they have the afternoon shade. But what usually happens is in the winter, they struggle with the cold. We get down to like 30 degrees and they all freak out. So that's why we planted them so close because we knew that some of them would get tall and then we, we planted bushy ones around the base of them to help you know, protect the trunks and create heat 
through the density of the planting. There's a lot of different trees you can grow here in Arizona. You just have to make sure you're getting the right varieties and that you know which microclimate on your property is going to be the best. So hopefully this helps you as you get started on your own yard. If you live in the desert area, it's totally possible. Don't listen to people that say, oh, you can't grow grapes here, or you can't grow blackberries, or you can't grow apples or apricots or stuff like that. It's totally possible. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you later.